WIN is less common. It is usually occurs in patients older than 55 years, from 55 to 85 years. If differentiated type WIN changes to squamous cell carcinoma, it becomes the keratinized subtype. Compared to HPV-induced precancerous lesions, they win tend to progress faster to invasive carcinoma, and in some cases it may happen within less than one year. Other types which are more rare, gentle, the drug disease, and melanoma in situ. They are another type of pre-invasive precancerous lesions. This scheme, we will try to pass it faster because I already explained it. If you are paying attention, I have possibility to see safe. If not, I will give it to you later. Thus, it is presenting the information which was given as conclusion and maybe scheme will help you to remember it easier. As about risk factors. Risk factors which are leading to development of precancerous diseases are follow. Follow. HPV, human papillomavirus, one of the most frequent risk factor which is leading to appearance of gentle and not only gentle uh, tumors. HIV virus hepatitis mostly C, uh, hypersimplex virus type 2, other viral infections, lichen sclerosis as we already told, lichen planus, smoking, immunosuppression, chronic viral irritation. Uh, symptoms. Some women have no symptoms of vulvar interpetalial lesion. An absence of clinical features, clinical symptoms is one of the most important and unfortunately dangerous situation because no suffering, no symptoms, patient may not come to your office, she will not come. And in these cases, the diagnosis will be confirmed as unexpected finding in annual exam that's why it is so important to make annual exam for patients, any groups of patients, or if patient came to your office because of other problems. As about well, signs and symptoms, if they are present, they are not typical, they are typical but not specific. Pay attention please to these symptoms. Itching and nevalma, soreness, burning, especially increased during urination, New micturition, changes to the vulval skin, skin such as red, white, or discolored area. And previously, in textbook, you may even meet it, you will see it. Previously, we even used terms like plaque, um, some other types related to the color. But nowadays, we exclude it from our practice because. Lake plica, for example, means nothing except a white spot, white color of the skin. Excess keratin production lead to a white appearance, whereas excess melanin production lead to dark lesions appearance. It means nothing except of something happened with the skin. It may be sign of inflammation. It may be scarring ulceration or maybe precancerous lesion and discomfort during intercourse it is another symptom if symptom is happening here are presented pictures you can see white spots uh, radish spots with some proliferation of tissue and you have to pay attention not only to the color not only to feelings of the patient Pay attention please to organization and architecture of the skin. If it is changed, and depending on the color, and depending on another situations, and depending even on the age, try to make cytology, if possible, <coughs> histology to exclude precancerous or malignant lesions. Diagnosis. As usually, diagnosis is based on anamnesis genetic, familial history, familial anamnesis, evolution of risk factors, HPV, HIV, cytomegalovirus, <coughs> GERPES virus, and so on and so on. Then, if patient has complaints, it would be based on patient complaints, clinical findings, and most important for us, colposcopy. We will use simple colposcopy. We will use extended colposcopy. Extended means before we will make colposcopic vital microscopic evaluation of the skin. We have to treat the area of input skin 
with iodine solution or with acetic acid application. <coughs> Palpascopy means white or microscopic exam, and it had to be followed with histologic exam, means biopsy. <coughs> Excuse me. Medications. <coughs> Is about vulval intraepithelial neoplasia. These plastic processes in the vulval skin as precancerous lesions. Medical therapy uh, options include immunohemat cream application. It had to be applied three times weekly for 12 to 20 weeks. This results in red, uh, inflamed, and eroded tissue of a company but considerable discomfort. Rather difficult for patient. Fire fluorescent cream applied twice daily for several weeks. Not so effective, comprehensive with imahimot and again leading to appearance of some inflammatory process, irritation, uncomfortable for the patient. But what we had to do, um, we had to think about advantages and disadvantages of treatment as if it is indicated we will use it and administer it. And for the dynamic therapy, which become more wider, wider useful nowadays, with rather good effects. Most important, not only treatment, but we had to understand if usually, if even we made a treatment and we got response results, treatment was responsive, effective, patient had to be under constant falling up. And falling out means exactly. Absolutely. Every six months, patient had to have corposcopic exam. Repeated corposcopic exam every six months is mandatory because the risk of transformation to malignancy is still present in these patients. And now we are discussing vulvar cancer. Cancer is the fourth most common gynecologic cancers after cancer of the uterus corpus, ovaries, and cervix. Uh, there are several histological types, whereas squamous cell carcinoma of the vulva is the most common category followed by melanoma, sarcoma, and basileoma. Vulval cancer can be distinguished into two separate diseases. The first type is a type involves a human papilloma virus infection that causes vulval intraepithelial neoplasia. 96% from causative subtypes of HPV are 16 and 18. This kind of vulvar cancer often occurs in younger patients who are sexually active or have multiple sexual partners. And the age of patient is less than 40 years. Other predisposing factors are sexually transmitted diseases in the past, low economical status, nicotine abuse, immune suppression, which is not dependent on um, viral infection only. The second type of vulvar cancer includes vulvar non-neoplastic epithelial disorders and advanced age that lead to cellular TP and eventually to the cancer. This kind of vulvar cancer often occurs in elderly patients 55 to 85 years. Age-related dystrophic changes, hormonal deficiency, diabetes mellitus, obesity, hypertension, Correlate to the incidence of vulvar cancer. Lichen sclerosis, a subgroup of these diseases, noted as a predisposing risk factor in the development of HPV negative vulvar cancer. Because of a severe pruritus caused by the lichen, the each stretch cycle leads to squamous cell hyperplasia and over time a progression to ATP followed with by vulval intraepithelial neoplasia and invasive cancer development. Here is presented most typical, but really a nowadays clinical feature of um, vulvar cancer. It is rare because we are able to make early diagnosis and this type of cancer will not be so frequent. I hope you can practice. The most commonly described symptoms of vulvar cancer is a long history of pruritus. And not only proved as well, we talked about symptoms. We had to pay attention that these symptoms are not specific. Period is burning, aging, mutilation, uh, pinkling could to cause. They are typical for inflammatory processes. They are typical for diseases characterized by pathological general discharge. They are not so typical as specific for cancer. 
And again, the same about vulvar cancer, not only for precancerous disease, but for malignant diseases of the vulva. Pruritus, repetitive recurrent inflammatory process, recurrent irritation, they are most frequent symptoms of vulvar cancer. And then, of course, overgrowing will be followed with swelling and appearance of cancer as a tumor. Tumor as a tumor. Less frequently, patients may have vulval bleeding, dysuria, discharge, and pain. And the most obvious manifestation of vulval cancer is a vulval lump or mass, which may present ulcerated, leukoplaky, fleshy, or warty. Here is presented. Here are presented clinical features, and all of these pictures are related to the recurse vulva carcinoma, which is dependent on the presence of viral infection, not only human papilloma virus, as about well staging. We will pay attention to the staging, and in later, later during our lecture, let me understand. We will use uh, two types of classification, TNN staging system and um, CEGO staging system. Both are very similar. Both classify cancer and not only by the cancer on the basis of three factors size of the tumor, whether the cancer has spread to lymph nodes, regional lymph nodes, firstly, and whether it has spread to distant sites, presence of metastasis. The final diagnosis, final diagnosis is dependent upon throughout um, histologic evaluation of the operative specimen or histologic evaluation of the Part of tissue which was cut as a type of biopsy, punch biopsy, knife biopsy may be used in these situations. I'm going to pay attention to this picture, please pay attention. Here, as pre here are presented two types of classification with the definition, explanation, TNM categories, figure stages, and According to any stages, here are presented types of surgical intervention, types of treatment, which is more indicated for these stages of the disease. This table may be fine in the internet. You may take it in our department. Please try to get it because at the first steps of your walking, it will help you to find out, uh, to confirm diagnosis and to find out the most indicated treatment. So what are surgical interventions? Here are presented surgical interventions to the stage T1, T2 of vulvar cancer. Wide local incision, excision of the vulva, it is um, proposed for the stage two, or uh, stage one, one A. Excision of the vulva by the loop electrical excision procedure, lead procedure, the same stage, stage one, one A radical wide excision and ipsilateral superficial inguinal lymphadenectomy is performed for lateral T1A or T1B bowel cancer. For the situation which is known as uh, stage T2, valvectomy is mostly useful. Patient may have partial valvectomy and the scheme of partial valvectomy is presented here, but more educated radical valvectomy for patients with two, uh, T2 stage of cancer. And here are presented, here is presented scheme of radical valvectomy. To understand it, we had to um, make as more correct diagnosis, I mean correct according to the stages. Now we are speaking, starting to discuss vaginal intrapitaneal neoplasia to precancerous lesions of vagina. Vaginal intrapitaneal neoplasia is a condition that describes the malignant histological findings in the vagina characterized by dysplasia. We already told dysplasia, fine in cytology, cytologic or histologic exam means true precancerous lesions. Typical features may appear in this situation. Uh, vulval vaginal intrapitellar neoplasia can occur in just one area of the vagina, 
but it more often affects several different areas it was multifocal it is believed that 70 percent of other vaginal intrapetalar neoplasia tumors are hpv induced mostly as a result of hpv type 16. again and again we are speaking about human papilloma virus it doesn't mean that human papilloma virus at once will lead to development of precancerous lesions or cancer the period of time of development of cancer against the background of HPV is a few years up to 10 years but don't think about these number of years if you find out if you confirm diagnosis of HPV don't forget that it is leading to dysplasia hyperplasia dysplasia followed maybe with development of cancer and start to make treatment as early as possible I mean treatment of human papilloma virus not only HPV, but other factors leading to depression of immune system are responsible for the development of um, vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia. Um, they include Gambus simplex virus, Cytomegalovirus, virus, Epstein Barr virus infection, smoking, uh, other immunity problems, particular medicines which are used because of the presence of some other diseases. As about degrees, as usually, vulval, vaginal, intrapetalial neoplasia, over mild, moderate, severe, uh, and severe diseases, dependent on the portion of uh, tissue which is involved to the, into the process. Symptoms may have no any symptoms maybe burning itching maybe pathologic vaginal discharge maybe synchronous discharge they are not so typical so vaginal intrapetalial neoplasia cannot be detected by the eye it can be detected with the help of cytologic exam pap testing and it would be detected with the help of vital uh, microscopy, which is known as colposcopy, and we can use simple colposcopy, extended colposcopy, chromocolposcopy, followed with biopsy. So it will help us to confirm correct diagnosis. Colposcopic exam with acetic acid is mostly useful in your countries. Colposcopic exam with acetic acid means that you have to make treatment of vaginal portion, portion of the vagina, which is, which is suspicious for precancerous disease. disease. Three to five percent acetic acid had to be applied. And after application, this elastic capitalium typically turns whiter than the surrounding not involved epithelial cells, epithelial tissue. And we use a special term which is used all over the world that is acetylwhite epithelium. More advanced dysplasia typically appears, appears denser, white, thicker, with more smooth and raised waters. Thus, the abnormal patterns which are typical for dysplastic for cells tissue involved into precancerous process are like a plaque patch include punctation mosaicism and frankly abnormal vessel variations or growing of the vessels is typical for malignant disease that's why vessels are involved into this process the more significant punctation and mosaicism, the more severe is the dysplasia. Here is present the clinical picture. Pay attention, number one is white proliferated tissue. Number four, white tissue, uh, and not only white but it is condylomatous feature. Three and two, pay attention to the difference of color. And when you will First of all, we are making diagnosis. It is cytologic microscopic exam, microscopic exam in vital situation. We are already able to make diagnosis, maybe not final, but it is really diagnosis. As about Schiller's test, it is not so useful in your countries, but still useful, maybe useful.
comprehensive with um, aesthetic acid application. It is with the, used with the only aim to find out here. Um, color of this um, tissue and in this case white spot I'm painted with iodine not white but I'm painted with iodine means that this area is affected it may be chronic inflammation it may be some any problems with structure architecture of this scarring for example it means nothing except of we had to take specimen just from this area and the part of spe specimen, part of tissue which would be taken uh, as biopsy had to include not only the affected area, but some part of um, normal, visibly normal tissue. It is better to make histologic exam. And here is presented special biopsy for offer uh, for us to take some spears for histologic exam. <clears throat> Treatment. The most useful type of treatment of uh, vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia is local ablation. It is conservative treatment. Uh, what are the type of local ablation? Ablation. Uh, hammer ablation may be used to destroy the abnormal cells and address their overgrowing. So, what can be used? Carbon dioxide leaves the treatment, dietary treatment, and surgery. Surgery include partial or total vaginectomy. Here is presented the scheme of making of partial or total vaginectomy. Removal of a part of the vagina and um, postoperative area are presented in this picture. Other options of treatment of vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia is radiotherapy. Hemotherapy, topical fluoroseal 5, may be used as imihimon, may be used in photodynamic therapy, is useful too. In follow up, mandatory coposcopic exam every six, it is <clears throat> exactly had to be done. Vaginal cancer. Now we are discussing about true cancer, we're speaking about just true cancer. In Vaginal cancer may be primary, may be metastatic. Pay attention, please, to the next picture. Primary carcinoma of the vagina. He represented most common forms, and not only forms, but um, key um, incidents of this type, peak age, spreading, and may, most important features, characteristics. That's why in this table, the most how much important information according to the general cancer is presented. Squamous cell carcinoma, the most frequent situation, varicose carcinoma, clear cell adenocarcinoma, melanoma, sarcoma, um, and the natural sinus tumor, and leomyosarcoma. Of course, the diagnosis of types which are presented here had to be done with the help of histologic exam only. The final point of the diagnosis is histology. Biopsy with histology. Staging as usual. TNL or FIGO system, depending on the presence of tumor, involvement of lymph node, and presence of metastasis. Something happened again with the system. Oh no, everything is okay. <clears throat> Causes and risk factors of general cancer, human papilloma virus, previous cervical cancer, in utero exposure to digital still bistral. Digital still bistral was very widely used approximately 30 years ago. We've got side effects, and now this category of patient are uh, aged patient after 60, for example, 55 and more years. And we are presenting category of risk for development of this cancer just because of this risk factor. Risk factor for vaginal cancer also include patient having a previous hysterectomy, smoking, being older than 60, having HIV. And an exposure for human papillomavirus in their previous history. Symptoms 
watery vaginal discharge, painful uh, or frequent urination, pelvic pain, especially during sex, fistulas, they are typical for late stages, manifestation of the process, and in some cases, vaginal cancer may have no symptom. It has no system at the early stages. Diagnosis, pulp testing, coposcopy, biopsy, and imaging studies in combination with the, uh, all listed below, MRI, CT scan, ultrasound, transvaginal ultrasound may be done, uh, it's of great importance. That's why all over the world, to prevent development of cancer, to minimize the risk of development of cancer, and to diminish the incidence of any type of gender cancer, we are trying, we propose to make annual exam for any categories of patients of any ages. Every year, these patients had to have examination. For all of cases, and by the way, to exclude development of precancerous lesions and calcium. As about treatment, treatment would be dependent on the stage, treatment would be dependent on the age, treatment would be dependent um, of the general condition of vision. If the cancer is stage one, and in the upper third of the vagina, surgery to remove the tumor and the small every area of healthy tissue around um, affected area is used. Depending on the size, localized location, and margins of tumor, doctor might remove only the tumor part of the vagina, vagina in whole completely, or it may be followed with hemotherapy combined or combined with. Uh, radiotherapy following up every six month coposcopic exam and now precancerous lesions of the cervix uterus maybe you will have possibility to discuss cervical uh, interpetial neoplasia Traditionally, the precancerous lesions of the uterus cervix are described as cervical dysplasia the cervix few words about anatomy and histology. The cervix represents the lower cylindrical distal portion of the uterus and is divided into ectocervix and endocervix. Ectocervix is the vaginal portion of the cervix, which is covered with, which is visible in spectral exam. Uh, and endocervix, it is cervical canal, and the cervical canal is the luminal cavity within the cervix forming a passageway between the external walls and internal walls or uterine cavity. The act of cervix is co covered with the <clears throat> non keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium. <clears throat> squamous epithelium are either native or metaplastic and continue to with them vaginal epithelium. The squamous epithelium is composed by multiple layers, basal, parabasal, intermediate, and superficial layer, just as it is in the uterine cavity. Just the same. And it is dependent on the hormonal stages, uh, hormonal balance, excuse me. Special changing of the type of cells are related to the menstrual cycle, as we talked about it when we discussed the menstrual cycle and endometrial changes, changes in the function layer of endometrium, just parallel, simultaneous, just the same. The endocervix, uh, internal uh, cavity of the cervical canal, is covered with a simple columnar epithelial epithelium that secretes mucus. And there is junction between the squamous epithelium and columnar epithelium. This junction is the finest squamous columnar junction. An abbreviation which is used all over the world is presented here. Its location on the cervix is variable. It is dependent on the age and dependent on the hormonal status. The squamous squamous columnar junction is the result of a continuous remodeling process resulting from uterine growth, cervical enlargement, and hormonal status. Columnar cells are constantly changing into squamous cells in an area of the cervix which is called the transformation zone.
or transition zone. The transformation zone is the area in which the cervical mucosa transform at the joints of the glandular epithelium and the stratified squamous cells. In other words, foci of squamous metaplasia. The transformation zone is the most common place on the cervix for abnormal cells to develop. These abnormal cells can be detected on a pap smear. And pap smear, specimen for pap smear, usually just taken from the area of transformation zone or sclomal canula junction. Here is presented scheme, and you can understand better what is transformation zone lucian color canula cells, uh, radish squamous cells, which are covering the general portion. And the transformation zone is the intermediate portion between these two areas. Scheme and photo picture with the transformation zone. Well, we are taking cervical brush. Well, we are trying to take smears for pop testing. We are taking cells from this transformation zone. And it can help us to understand what is cytology in both areas with canola cells and squamous epithelium cells. Depending on which cells are involved, the malignancy of the cervix is referred to cervical interepithelial neoplasia, CIN, cervical interepithelial neoplasia, or adenocarcinoma in situ. Cervical interepithelial neoplasia, cells of the outer surface of the cervix, the squamous cells are subject to precancerous changes. Precancerous lesions that affect these cells is called CIN. These changes are classified as mild, moderate, severe, with the same rules of classification as we already discussed. And adenocarcinoma in situ, in the case when the cells of the cervical canal glandular cells are affected by precancerous lesions, the precancerous lesion that affect the cells is called adenocarcinoma in situ. And when we are taking cells from transformation zone, we are getting two types of cells, and we are getting results in relation to these two types. Precancerous lesions of the cervix are diagnosed by cytological exam with the help of pap smear testing of a squamous calumna junction or transformation zone and tissue biopsy from the cervix. Usually we are making both cytology and histology. Different terms are used to describe cervical dysplasia and nowadays we use Bethesda system to classify as a um, type of classification of these uh, precancerous lesions. The past the system is presented at any sources of information, you'll easy find it and it is an idea to find it because when you read it more yourself, you will understand it better. It is looking like a like difficult situation to remember all these classification, but when you will read yourself, you will understand it better and better to remember. When conducting a cytologic study of the cervical transformation zone, precancerous lesions of the cervix are as, as described as follows. Um, atypical squamous cells of indefinite significance, ASCOS, low grade squamous intrapitalial lesion, high grade squamous intrapitalial lesion, and dependent on the language and depending on the country, we use this abbreviation in Russia. And I hope in India you will use just this abbreviation, ASCOS. L seal, A H seal, and so on. When conducting histologic examination of the maternal material obtained by biopsy of the cervix, dysplasia is described as cervical interpetalial neoplasia, CIN, mild, moderate, and severe. These are all precancerous conditions. These are not exactly synonyms, but describing the same process, but depending on the type character of cells which are taken or um, more affected. Just this picture um, presenting this situation. Progression of cervical intrapitalial neoplasia presented normal squamous cells, CIN1 mild cervical intrapitalial neoplasia corresponding to low grade of squamous intrapitalial lesion, CIN2 and 3 corresponding to high grade of squamous intrapitalial lesion, and even carcinoma in situ, which is 
um, presenting, which is borderline condition between dysplasia and development of cancer already. Carcinoma in situ. That's results. Abnormal results of from um, pap tests are presented here, and uh, we tried to present but as the system and CIL system to compare to understand what is corresponding to uh, correspondence in between each other. Um, thus, diagnosis. Diagnosis will be done by the help of cytology and histology, as we already told, risk factors, assistant human papillomavirus infection, multiple sexual partners, sexual activity, early starting of sexual life, and very sexual active young patients, smoking, depression of immune system, multiple pregnancies, long-term oral contraceptive use, especially estrogen containing high doses of estrogen and low social economical status condition. As about signs and symptoms, cannot be presented with the signs and symptoms, but may be presented with appearance of whitish discharge, serious squamous, uh, serious sanguineous discharge, and mostly these discharge are dependent on concurrent infection process. Diagnostics is done, as I'm already told, with the pap testing. Starting any patient in reproductive age had to make pap testing as many once a year. If you got patient for any gynecology exam, and depending on the reason, she came to your office. Make pap testing for all of cases. In this case, you will have be able to make early diagnosis of uh, development precancerous lesions. Early diagnosis, more responsive treatment, effective treatment, and effective management. So, pub testing, uh, testing for of, um, diagnosing of oncogenic types of human papillomavirus, colposcopic exam. Cervicoscopic exam used in this case. The same in coposcopy, but in relation to the cervix and cervical biopsy. Histologic exam is the final step. So, treatment low grade squamous lesions, cervical intrapetellar neoplasia, usually resolved, but um, maybe resolved itself. But they had to be followed with following up of vision of the patient, even in this case. So, what are treatment options? As about moderate and severe, have to be treated exactly. And as about the options of treatment, they include prior surgery, laser surgery, combat C hysterectomy, as you understand already, I hope. We had to remove affected area. Surgical with large surgery, other types, we had to remove affected area exactly and in some cases if patient has a number of risk factors we will make the same surgical intervention even for patients who are suffering from milder uh, form of cervical intrapetellar neoplasia. my dear colleagues time is over already thus unfortunately i had to finish my lecture those i'm very thankful for you you were sitting and waiting uh, depending on problems with the system and everybody who will want to get this lecture will get it please be careful of yourself please be very attentive to the situation take care of yourself and use all the rules of isolation you have time not for walking you are free of classes but you had to understand your medical students maybe we were needing your help we had to be you had to be healthy and try to make isolation as well as possible take care of your health self and try to be healthy please and um, thank you thank you very much for listening to me hope we will see you later